Great. Good morning, everybody. My name is Professor Michael Kidd. I'm Deputy Chief Medical Officer and Principal Medical Advisor here at the Department of Health in Canberra. Yesterday's update, as of 3 p.m. today, there are 6,783 people in Australia who've been diagnosed as COVID-19 positive. Tragically, 93 people have lost their lives to COVID-19. There were 16 new cases in the previous 24 hours. At the moment, we have 84 people in hospital, 28 people in intensive care units, and 21 people on ventilators. It's important to note that 5,755 people in Australia are reported to have recovered from COVID-19. And at the moment, we have just over 900 people who are diagnosed and actively infected. I want to provide a brief brief update on four items. I want to talk about the COVID Safe app. I want to talk about testing. I want to talk about what's happening with telehealth. And I want to re-emphasize the importance of people looking after their own health. First, an update on the app. To date, over 4 million people across Australia have downloaded the app onto their smartphones. If you've been putting off downloading the app, please do it today. As we all know, it's very important that as many people as possible right across Australia download the app so that we can use this as part of our efforts to improve contact tracing right across the country. Secondly, around testing, we've had 611,000 tests carried out in Australia to date. As you know, we're one of the countries which has carried out the highest rates of testing all around the world. I do want to talk a little bit about testing though. As of Friday last week, we've opened up the criteria for testing and now testing is available to anyone who has symptoms of a respiratory tract infection or anyone who has symptoms of fever. This is really important. So anybody who has even the slightest sniffle or scratchy throat or cough or sweating at night time, uh, please contact your GP or contact the Health Direct phone line to make sure that, you're, uh, that you get tested. And by doing so, we'll make sure that we pick up uh, any cases of COVID-19 as early as possible and then prevent further transmission. Telehealth. Telehealth was introduced into Australia in the middle of March and to date there have been over 7.2 million consultations between Australians and their chosen health care providers using telehealth. This is an extraordinary change in the way that we're delivering health care in Australia. It's very important that everybody knows that telehealth is available to all Australians and that it doesn't just require a video consultation, it can also be carried out using a regular telephone. So please, if you do have healthcare concerns, reach out uh, to your GP and see if you can arrange a consultation using telehealth or whether a face-to-face -face consultation is required. And this brings me to my final point, which is about the importance of looking after our own health at the time of the pandemic. We do know that many people have been afraid to leave their own homes and may have experienced new symptoms which may indicate serious underlying disease or may have continuing chronic health problems or mental health concerns and have not been reaching out to their regular health care providers. It's absolutely essential that everybody continues to receive the health care that they need at this time. So please, if you're due to go for an appointment to see your GP or a specialist, please ring up, see if that appointment uh, still needs to be done face to face or can be done by telehealth. If you need to have a blood test done, it's safe to go to the pathology collection centre to have your blood tested. If you need to have an x-ray, it's safe to go to the radiology clinics uh, to have those tests as well. If you have a child who is due to have an immunisation, please take your child to get their regular childhood immunisations. If you need to have a test to exclude cancer, uh, breast screening, cervical uh, screening, uh, bowel cancer screening, please continue to do this, do this as you normally would. It's really important that we don't put off regular health care uh, at this time, that we make sure that we're continuing to get the care that we need. Finally, I'd just like to finish with a word of thanks to my peers and colleagues uh, all around Australia. Thank you to the healthcare workers of Australia, to the people working in aged care, 
in disability care, in home care, and providing other services to look after the most vulnerable people in our country during these challenging times. Thank you. Happy to take any questions that we have. Um, can health officials access the data from the COVID Safe app at the moment? Uh, health officials, so the only people who will be able to access the data will be the contact tracer officials in each of the states and territories. Uh, that uh, facility is still to go live, that will be happening during the current week. But the important thing is if people uh, have downloaded the app and they have it running in the background on their phone, it's already gathering details of people who you've been in close contact with. So once it gets uh, accessed by the contact tracer, they'll be able to access details from when you downloaded the app. So can you um, explain then, for example, if I um, was tested positive to coronavirus today, I had the app, um, would those contract tracers say next week be able to go back over my data and then start making the calls? Yep, that's, that's what will happen. So, so it's about a delay of a week though, getting in touch with people? Uh, there's a delay from now until when the contact tracer in the state or territory where you're based uh, has activated the system so they're able to contact you as a person who's been diagnosed and invite you to share that data uh, with the contact tracer and then people will uh, be able to be contacted through that. But yes, there is a delay as we're getting this set up uh, of a few days. And why isn't it set up yet? We're being told to download this app but it can't actually be used yet by the contact tracer. Yes, so this has been implemented very quickly and what we're doing is making sure that the operations are going to work uh, appropriately and safely, but also uh, to make sure uh, that uh, the people in the contact tracing facilities in the states and territories are trained on how to use the app and how to use it appropriately. What's the thinking behind the blood thinning drug, is it Herapin? I hope I've pronounced that right. Herapin, have you heard of Heparin. that? Heparin. Heparin, yeah. Heparin. Yes. Um, being trialled for COVID-19 patients. What, what is the benefits of that? that that people are looking into? Yes, so there are a lot of different treatments being looked at as potential uh, treatments for people who become seriously unwell with COVID-19. And I think each day we're seeing uh, reports from different parts of the world about uh, either existing drugs, which may have uh, some utility, or uh, new drugs which are being uh, developed uh, over time. And one of the drugs which has been, uh, had reports uh, over the last 24 hours is heparin, which is a blood thinning drug. Uh, it's been widely used for, for many, many years. One of the features of uh, COVID-19 in people who become very seriously unwell uh, appears to be uh, challenges with, um, with the vessels. Uh, we don't know whether this is inflammation of the vessels or whether there's clotting occurring. We've had some reports over the past week of reasonably young people who've had strokes, which appear to have been related to blood clots. And, uh, and so therefore people are looking to see whether some of these anticoagulant drugs like heparin uh, have a place uh, in the treatment of this disease. Just back on the app, sorry, there, that 15 point checklist was issued yesterday and the idea behind that is once all of those can be ticked off, restrictions can be relaxed. So what figure do the app downloads have to get, off, uh, get up to in order for that point on the checklist to be ticked off? Yes, so clearly we need as many people as possible to download the app for it to be as, as widespread as possible so that we can benefit as much as we can. Having four million people who've already downloaded in six days provides a fantastic baseline for us to start working from. But clearly more and more people, uh, the more people who do it, the, the better it's going to be. There's no absolute number which, uh, which will tell us that this is helping because every person who downloads is making a contribution. What's the ideal number though? What do you have to get to at least for it to be really effective in curbing the spread of corona? Yeah, well, four million is pretty amazing when you think about it in a country of our size and uh, considering the number of people who are carrying uh, mobile phones with them, but uh, obviously the Prime Minister is very keen to get that number up a lot further. Uh, the Warriors, obviously we've heard today that the Border Force has approved the NRL team to fly from New Zealand to Australia. Um, that was based on medical advice from the Chief Medical Officer. What reassurances can you provide the Australian community that it's okay to let this team into the country? Yes, so this is a, a team coming from New Zealand and of course New Zealand is a country which, like Australia, acted very quickly uh, to close its borders. 
and has been uh, had introduced restrictions like we have in Australia to protect the public and has been very successful like Australia in reducing community transmission. So this will be a decision uh, for uh, obviously the border forces and for the Prime Minister about whether to allow uh, the opening up uh, with uh, New Zealand of people coming in uh, from that country. We obviously have uh, Australians uh, coming in from New Zealand uh, at the moment, uh, returning home, and, uh, and that'll be a decision that border forces will need to make. Can I ask another question on the app, sorry? Yeah, I think so, but we also have some questions uh, yep. on, on the phone here, but yes, one more. Um, mm -hmm. While the government investigates the potential interference between its COVID Safe app and the CGM, diabetes apps, what is the advice from government or from you about what diabetes patients with that CGM app should do? Should they keep the COVID Safe app on? Should mm -hmm. they take it off? I think that it's really the, the most important issue here for people with uh, diabetes who are relying on the app to assist them to maintain safe levels uh, of blood sugar and to assist them with uh, the use of their medications to make sure that they're going to stay safe and well. That is the number one priority for those people with uh, diabetes. So while uh, we sort out between the two different apps uh, whether there is any clash, most important that people are managing their diabetes and doing so safely. Just a report uh, in the media today suggests that a lack of transparency about the origin of the virus and the spread cost tens of thousands of lives unnecessarily. Is that the medical community's thoughts on that? Uh, I haven't seen that report, but uh, what, what do we know about the origins of the virus? Now, we've only, as far as we know, been sharing the planet with the virus for the last four months. It's been a uh, very, uh, very short time. A uh, huge amount of research uh, into the virus and looking at uh, trying to help us to understand uh, transmission, understand uh, what having been infected means and what are the post-viral issues uh, associated as well. I think that what we saw very early on was reports uh, coming out of China about the, uh, the identification of the virus. Uh, and uh, that, of course, allowed Australia to act uh, quickly in closing our borders to travellers from China uh, at that time and then to extend the other uh, measures which, uh, which we have. I think that having had that uh, information early on uh, in the, um, the initial development of what was an epidemic and then became the pandemic uh, has actually helped to save many lives. Can we go to the questions from the phone? Fiona Willen here from Channel 9. Um, I just wanted to ask, do you think it's realistic that we will get millions more people downloading the app before Friday? Uh, yes, I, I think that is uh, realistic. I think that having seen 4 million people uh, download the app in just six days is pretty extraordinary. Now that it's the weekend, if uh, people have been putting off uh, downloading the app to the weekend when you've got more time, uh, please, uh, please do it today. I wanted to, I've got three questions if you don't mind. Um, so some people have complained that this deadline feels like pressure to do something they may not be comfortable with. What would you say to that? Yes, I don't think anyone should feel pressured into downloading the app. This is totally voluntary and, uh, and we're inviting people to do this. But by doing this, you are potentially helping to protect your own health, to protect the health of your family members and to protect the health of the wider community. So this is something that we can all do at a time when many of us are feeling what can we do uh, in the face of this pandemic. This is something very positive and constructive each of us can do. And this last one, and excuse in advance my pronunciation that's coming up here. Now, are you concerned about people, including Clive Palmer, are pushing hydroxychloroquine? Do you advise caution there? Well, hydroxychloroquine is a drug which is used uh, in the treatment of a number of conditions in Australia, including lupus. So it is a, uh, a very useful drug. There are trials underway, including in Australia, on, to look at the use of hydroxychloroquine uh, in the treatment of people with COVID-19. And as we start to understand more about the different patterns of uh, illness that COVID-19 causes uh, to see where it will be most useful uh, and, uh, and with which, which patients. So at the moment, um, the drug is in trial, uh, both in Australia and uh, in many centres around the world. Uh, I think it's very useful having uh, adequate stocks of the drugs, both for those people who need to take it as part of the management of their chronic conditions and also for these uh, research trials uh, to see how useful it's going to be in uh, ongoing care. 
Um, That's great. Professor, when can we expect Thank to you. be able to hug people again? That is a lovely question, especially with Mother's Day uh, coming up. So thank you. Thank you for asking. At the moment, the, the physical distancing recommendations uh, stay in place. Uh, obviously, we can hug the members of our immediate household who we're uh, sharing our homes with, but uh, we're restricted with others. I think it is really important that we continue, especially to protect the most vulnerable people uh, in our society, uh, in our community, and for many of that, us, of course, that includes our mums. Uh, and, uh, and other people. So let's hope uh, it won't be too long. Thanks, everybody. Thanks a lot. Thanks.